Daniel from Wolverhampton Music Service and in this video I'll be looking at the Grade 6 clarinet piece Allegro Manon Troppo by Lefebvre. Now this is a great piece to start working at if say you have recently done your Grade 5 exam and are looking to get started on some Grade 6 repertoire. The piece is not too technically challenging Probably the trickiest aspects of it are the ornaments, which means that you can get to know the main body of the piece first and then gradually introduce your ornaments as you feel more comfortable with them and with playing the piece. Now I will begin by looking at some technical points first and then perform just the clarinet part of the first half slowly so that you can get used to playing along with that as you're learning the piece. I will then perform the whole piece with piano accompaniment at the marked tempo. Now if we consider the character and style of the music, uh, it's useful to know that uh, Lefebvre was composing at around the same time as Mozart, just born a few years later, and the music has that similarly pleasing and melodic feel to it. There are no extremes of dynamics or tempo, in fact, the tempo, the name of the piece, is Allegro Ma Non Troppo, which means fast but not too fast, so don't overdo the speed. An important aspect of performing this piece is the articulation, which is very carefully marked throughout the piece. A lot of slurs, a lot of tonguing, and specifically the staccato marks over several notes. And there are several phrases where the slurs and staccato marks are combined. So I'll just play one phrase from start of bar 16 to show the two together. Another tricky aspect of this piece is the breathing um, with lots of long phrases so it's really important that you do mark in your breathing points and stick with them. Uh, there are some phrases are joined together, and one particularly long phrase from thir bar 13 to bar 29, and I suggest that you breathe after the two minim Gs in bars 17 and 21, and that will help you get through to the double bar in the middle of the piece. Technically, as far as the notes are concerned, it's not too difficult. It's in the key of A minor, so quite a few G sharps. And also, there are several D sharps which are preceded by C in the middle register. So you have to use your left hand C key before your D sharp. And don't forget to check out the last but one bar of the piece, which has a lot of syncopation, which must be shown through very clear tonguing. Now if we come to the ornaments, the first one we meet is the appoggiatura in the second full bar. Um, it is marked as an A going on to a crotchet G sharp, but here they are supposed to both be played as even quavers. And there are four other instances of that appoggiatura appearing later in the piece, and they are to be played in exactly the same way. Now there is another type of appoggiatura a little later, just in bar five, where they look like two small semiquavers in front of the crotchet E. Now they are to be played just in front of the beat with the crotchet E on the beat itself. And they're both played, the appoggiatura notes are played very quickly. Now there's a similar ornament to the appoggiatura a bit later on in the piece, at the beginning of bar 38. Uh, it looks like an appoggiatura but with a diagonal line going through it. That means it's in a chacatura and you play this as a very fast note just in front of the marked note A quaver and it's the A quaver which is on the beat. And the chacatura is just in front of the beat. I'll play from the end of bar 36 and that phrase of course 
also includes the first type of appoggiatura. Now there are also two trills in the piece. The first in bar six is not too bad, it's on the crotchet D, which means that you go up to the E as fast as possible and then finish the trill with a CDC, where the second one is actually the one that is marked as the crotchet in the music. So a lot of notes all in one beat. Don't worry if you don't get quite that many notes in, as long as you go up to the E and then back down to D and then CDC again at the end. Now the second trill, is a little more complicated in bar 36. It's preceded by an achacature and it's over a minim C, which means there are a few extra quick notes to squeeze in. And then it finishes with the B, C, B, with the final B being a crotchet at the end. So if I just demonstrate from the bar before, bar 35, And the final type of ornament is the turn, and the first of these is in bar 31. It's written over a crotchet C, which means that you play four notes like four semiquavers instead of the crotchet C. And the first of those notes is the note above the printed note. So you start on D, down to C, down again to B, and back up to C before playing the next printed note which is the quaver D. So I'll just play that from the beginning of the bar. Now the second turn is a classic turn, which is positioned between two notes. It's in bar 41, and it's just after the crotchet or dotted crotchet D. Um, there's also a very small printed sharp underneath the turn sign, which means that you begin with the D, then go up to E, down to D, down then to C sharp, back up to D before playing the next printed note, which is your quaver E. So I'll just demonstrate that phrase, and of course there's also an appoggiatura in the next beat as well. So now just to help you get going learning this piece, I will play the first half of it at a slower tempo to the one marked. It's marked as 120 to 126 uh, crotchet beats per minute. Now I'll go a little slower than that just so you can sort of join in as you're learning it. I'll count three just to help you get started. One, two, three. So now I'm going to perform the piece with piano accompaniment, which I recorded a little earlier, and it'll be played at crotchet equals 122. There will be a short count in of three, just to help you get the opening upbeat. One, two,
worth getting going with this piece and hope you enjoy it. Don't forget now to look out for further video releases from the Wolverhampton Music Service. Thank you.